Hello again. Welcome back to Enshrouded. Today's video will be a little bit different, but I got so much feedback, so many questions, and this video will be kind of FAQ to answer all your questions, to show some different things, and as little surprise to show you my updates on the castle. I was busy the last days not only creating all the tutorials and showcase videos, but also to improve the castle uh, after your feedback and also working on my next big project. So yesterday I published a video about art styles etc. And I also got a lot of questions in this regard, but most common question in all the comments below all my videos was about the flame. So how did I place the flame? How did I move it? Did I even move it? And how can I build in such a large area, etc.? These questions are related to the flame. So let's get started. And here we are back in the tutorial area. I will build another small house today to answer your questions. But first of all, let me answer the questions about the flame. So this area here is my tutorial area. And each flame you place, I can show you this in a second. Let me grab some stone and craft a flame. So here we have it. This is the flame altar. And as you can see, if I move it around, there's a red line, outline, which moves. This is basically a 40 by 40 voxel area. The measurements on the already placed one here. Yeah, it says 160 by 160 by 160. This is a level four. So you can upgrade your flame four times or maybe, maybe three times after level one. And then it becomes each time it's multiplied by four. So if we place this one, you can see there's a really small area to grab your construction hammer. And then you will see the outlines of your altar. So the first one is right here. If you want to improve this, go to your altar, communicate with it and upgrade it. Costs short course and level 2 will be 80 by 80. Uh, level 3 will be 120 by 120 and level 4, as said, is 160 by 160. Okay. If you want to delete your altar, just click on extinguish flame and after 30 seconds it's gone. So. How did I move the altar upwards? Well, let me show you. Let's go to our throne room. Here we are. And this is the flame. So actually, I never moved this one. I placed it on top of the mountain. I will cover the topic of the location later. And then let me show you this on this side. Mm, I can't remove it here. So let me just delete some single pieces. There you can see this is the bottom. And then I just built all the stuff around it. I hollowed out the floor below the altar. I removed all the rocks from the mountaintop and then I just built everything downwards and around it. This is how I actually placed the altar. So it never moved a single time. It's also not movable. It's not possible. But I built around it. Also, if you want to build you can't build on the altar up to a height of, I think it's six or eight voxels. So I placed all these pillars around it 
as you can see, this is uh, the corner. You can't place anything on it. I think up to this height here. So everything I placed is not on the altar, but besides. So this is how I got the lame into this spot. And the distance is really a problem, I can tell. If I grab my hammer, you can see the red outline is like down there. And in this direction, down there. So it's pretty huge and I almost used up all the space. Let me go to my gardening area. There you can see it really good. See? So this is the border why I can't build further. And let me show the other side. There you can see it, it's in the tree. Red line over there. So I have space to the bottom. I can still build downwards, but not upwards. Then there was another question uh, about how did I design the architecture? Or did I look at sources or examples? And yes, I have looked up some pictures and as you know I'm from Germany and if you have been to Castle Neuschwanstein then you know already there are a lot of nice medieval castles here in Germany and of course I visited a lot of them so I have kind of real life experience on how it looks, how it feels, what materials they use and this is of course some experience you, you can see and would influence also my, my builds. There's no question about this, but I didn't look up especially one thing or uh, made uh, a copy of an existing castle. I just made it up in my mind. And another <laughs> comment was, if I'm an architect in real life, no, I'm not. And I also didn't make a paper plan. This is just imagination. And while I'm building, I'm improving and I'm thinking about how can I make it more interesting or how can it be expanded later on? This is what I think about during the building. So basically the way the journey is my goal and you know, I just keep improving everything. Another thing which was asked really often is about the farming. So how much did I farm, what materials did I use, and uh, where did I farm on the map, etc. I already published a farming overview map on the community page and also on my website, which is linked down below. And there were a lot of comments about the books in the library. Yes, it, I had to farm a lot, really a lot. But uh, you also mentioned that you need 80 old books for one book. This is not correct. You need uh, 20 books, 20 old books for crafting one book, but you need 80 books for crafting a staple of books. This is a difference because a staple of books or a column is uh, much higher and wider. So you need more, of course. And during my time of leveling up to level 25, I already collected about 1,500 to 2,000 old books and of course this was a nice starting point to uh, start crafting. So I had a couple of hundred books already uh, in my storage and let me show you where I farmed this. Um, this was also another question, where on the map is this? So here is my complete map. Um, down here we have Cinderbolt, so this is basically long keep of the starting position and we are just a couple of kilometers in the north over here. And as you can see there's the castle on the hilltop and here's my tutorial area, so I have basically two flame altars to cover up the things. I also have some others over here 
or here or here they are strategically placed so I can uh, farm specific things uh, let me show you my farming location for books so basically I farm in uh, pike meets reach I have a flame altar over here so let's go there and I will show you so here we are this is where the wyvern battle is also in the distance over there and down in this town there are so many there are so many houses shelves and locations which you can farm it's just incredible so whenever i go on a farm route i jump down here loot all the houses reset and do it again okay another question was can i show my map of course i can so all the green spots are farming spots for the castle for example we have amber over here we have a lot of clay over here bronze flintstone everything and the more advanced materials are in the north and the east for example i have tin and copper over here there's a big iron spot over here which is also in this cave passage there is a lot of sulfur in here big location down here we have a lot of lapis lazuli and sulfur also also here is another iron mine and on this side there's also a lot of iron and luminous growth for the glowstone yeah stone and everything else i'm farming in the surroundings there's no specific location for this but today's patch dropped and they also mentioned that they added more material spots so i'm not sure yet what else we have now in the surroundings so uh, the castle is on a hilltop so i can traverse really easy into the near surroundings and distances that's quite good okay now back to your questions there was another question uh, where i did get the flower soil or how did i make the flower soil so you go to the ancient spire springlands and then you just head uh, west to harvest homestead let me show you and there's just one small patch where you actually can farm the soil and here is a lot of flower soil you just take your pickaxe and then you go and find the soil then there was a question about where did i get my polished stone the polished stone is i think part of a quest line but if you can't find one specific material then i will link down another tutorial video with all the materials and there's a link down below to reddit where you can find a full list of the locations of all materials and building blocks so i won't cover this topic if someone else already did it so yeah just look it up it's a nice reddit post i link it down below and then you should find all your stuff you need there was another question what materials did i use i divided the castle into different layers from the top to the bottom at the top i have very high quality materials because it's the core of the castle the flame the uh, center room and there i used um, polished stone fancy stone and at this time i didn't have the high polished stone so i didn't use it but i will in my next builds and the lower we get into the castle or into the basement the rougher the material becomes so from the regular stone i went to the rough cut stone and later on to the city block stone and 
if you go even deeper, then it's the castle stone. So it becomes rougher and darker. And this is just normal because uh, if you go into the underground, then everything becomes more dirty and used up and also uh, mixed into the mountain rock. This is why I use this pattern and so basically high quality on the top and low quality on the bottom and all between is a fluent uh, mixture of materials from all kinds of stones depending on the room etc. I will show you this also a little bit later when I show you the update on the castle. Another question I got a lot was can I share my build, my save game? Yes I can and I will. But right now I'm working on the second big project, which is also inside this area. And I can't show you or spoil this, so I won't share it until I released and published it. After that I will share my build, so you can explore the map for yourself and all the builds. I will also leave the tutorial area, so you can watch the stuff you are seeing right now. For one question which was in the comments, can I make cylindrical towers? Yes, the simple answer is yes, we can do this, but it's really difficult. I will explain this. So let me grab some material, regular stone, and refined stone, and let's go. So if we go into any build, and if you build a tower especially, then you want to have like a, a sphere bottom. And let me show you. Let's say the tower, this is the diameter of the tower. Let me grab a smaller piece over here and place it down here. Another one here here and one here. Now I need the voxel tool and I will fill in these gaps. Okay, this is the smallest cylindrical tower you can make with the ground floor of 8x8. Eight eight. Now you simply grab your pillars 3x3 three three, and you start adding these into the sky. Yeah, that's it basically. And if you want to have a bigger shape, bigger circle, bigger diameter, then you have to build a little bit different. So another solution would be a manual circle. So basically you have iteration of two, two down, two down, one diagonal and so on. This is another circle-like build structure, which you can then rise into the sky, but also you have to do it manually. And it looks way rounder than the other one, but it's also a little bit bigger. And you could also do this in a smaller circle, let's say just two by two. Like so. So this is a smaller one, looks like this one, and this is three by three, three diagonal, and three again. So it really depends on what kind of circle you want to have. Okay, I think this covered the question if I can make cylindrical towers. You can. But it's a lot of work. Now for a more complex question. The question was 
how can I build a half timbered wood house with two gables? And another comment asked about a split staircase into the main room and different rooms on the side. So I will combine both questions into one building and will show you how I would approach this problem or this build. So let me place down uh, first the outlines, what I want to build, and then we go into the details. Okay, so here we have a rough outline of the build and the question was how to build the staircase inside here. So first thing I would do is build a complete balcony around it in the main hall. So let's do this here. And for this I will use fancy stone with the wooden ornaments which look much better than regular stone. And I will also combine normal wood and uh, half timber blocks on the top. Now for the staircase, um, first of all for the big staircase in the middle of the hall, which is exactly on the opposite side of the entrance, I would use a big staircase like so. And to make it more interesting, I would also go um, half of the height. So let's take only four and let me see. Yeah, let's only take four up to here. Like so. Now we place down another floor over here, which is fitting here exactly. Now let's delete those on the sides. And now let's place the 4x4 stairs over here. See, and now you have a nice staircase which leads into the other rooms. Let me place down some wooden floor over here. Also over here. For the other part of the build I will use uh, half timber blocks. Now let's make another staircase to the attic. But just a small one. Now for the roof tiles. I will use the 
stone shingle roof block but we could also use any other material like roof tile blocks So as mentioned in other videos, always begin in the corners, so let's grab our corner tool for big houses. And let's try to put this down here, right on the corner. Okay, let's say we want to have a gable over this part up here. So let me place a marker so I can see actually where I want to add this. Like here and here. So I delete the part over here. And now we need the roof tile which fits in here. So a gable is always done with an inverted roof tile. So it's pointing outwards. And this is uh, way too big, I think. Well, actually it could work, but this, yeah, this is way too big. We need the smaller one, like this one. And I place it right on the corner here. Turn it around. And place the second one and as you already can see this turned into a nice gable already so let's grab the same tool and let's place it over here Turn it around by one. And here we have all the rest. So let's place down the corners. fits. Now let's place a little bit of structure over here. So this is the middle. But first Let's finish the middle part of the roof. But now we have a main hall with a balcony like style around it and I would now fill in the caps over here now the inner part um, you can build in some windows also, there's one thing I want to mention. Um, if you are in build mode, you can build stuff. That's, that's right. But if you place some blocks on your hotbar, let's say the timber tile wood, and let's say the refined wood, and maybe the fancy stone, then you can actually, by pressing the corresponding number, like so, seven, 
can actually build single voxels without using your build mode, as you can see. So I could cover up some missing parts over here. Or, this is what I will do now, I will take my roof shingles and now I'm able to place single boxes just by hand. And this is also how you can make your windows like so. Just two on top and two more over here, two more this side So this is the question about building gables and about building a split up staircase into the main floor. Of course in this build I have not an next room but just a little roof over here. In this build I just have a roof over here but you could also use a bigger house and then you add Let's say another doorway over here. Yeah, would be another possibility. Okay, it's pretty bare bone, but it's just a quick build. Okay, as promised, now we have covered up most of the questions from you guys. And now I will show you what I did in the castle. Okay, we are back at the castle. And the first thing I want to show you is the growth of these trees I planted. They were really tiny and now they cover up almost the whole mine. So they grow so massively that I had to cut two or three of them in front of the castle because I wanted to add something. And the first thing I added is hidden behind these bushes and this is a little natural shrine. With some benches and flowers Just an area to chill, sit down. And to enjoy the view. Next thing, I added a lot of flower soil, so there are neat little flowers all over the place. So let's head into the castle and let's see what I did over there. First of all, I changed the front door, and one curious thing about this, the bronze door is actually one voxel wider than the iron door, and the iron door has also this sand-like structure to it. But the biggest difference, you will see right now, I completely changed the main hall. I added golden rims to the floor, and I also added this little guest book at the entrance so we have some interesting 
things inside and it's not as plain as before. I also added these small iron fences over here. Looks much more interesting. And these rims are actually connected to all the doors, as you can see. So there's a pattern behind it, so it fits in here. And I also added some more lights, small lighters here at the side, and it looks much better now. Due to the fact that I altered this floor, I had also to alter all floors below it because it was only one voxel thick. So let me show you what I changed down below. I added a second layer of ceiling in every room and in this case we have the rough cut stone. As I mentioned before, the deeper we go, the rougher our material becomes. Also in here, this is now a second layer of ceiling to cover up the golden rims. And the good thing about this, I also added fancy stone texture to the library and now it's even more woody, more wood look. And much better than before. So even the library has got some upgrades just from adding a second ceiling. But the actual surprise for you today will we find next to our carpenter. Hello. You remember this staircase which leads to the throne room? Well, guess what? There's even more to discover. Let's head down into the secrets and mysteries of this castle. We are now deep down below the castle and there is a big secret hidden. It's a mystical altar of long forgotten gods. We're just looking down below the castle. And I wouldn't be me if there is no secret also in here. So let me show you another way out of here. Then 
and here we are back again in our garden So, let me finish this episode with a nice little overview in our chill out area. That's it for this episode. I hope you liked it and leave a comment, a like, please subscribe to help out my channel and See you in the next one. Thanks and bye bye.